chapter 5 and verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, we have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, and that's a good verse to, when you're talking to someone about the rapture, that'd be a good verse to use. Uh, Revelation is an outpouring of the wrath of God. And, and, and verse 9 says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but Ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Now, in the, I'm going to read the next one too. In... Second Thessalonians chapter 1, uh, beginning with verse 3, and then we'll read a few, several verses in go to chapter 2, but uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 1, beginning with verse 3. We're talking, these scriptures are concerning overcoming Satan's schemes. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. So that we ourselves glory in you, in the churches of God, for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. And then over to chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be soon, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, 
that the, that that day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And then shall the wicked... And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved." That tenth verse is sad, isn't it? And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. I think we sh probably are not near as concerned as we ought to be about those people that's going to perish at the coming of the Lord. Oh, uh, I, it skipped around probably, and I failed to. We went from verse. It, it's in. Thessalonians chapter 2, and we read the first four verses and then skipped to 8, 9, and 10. Stopped at 4 and skipped to 8, 9, and 10. I failed to make mention of that. So are we caught up? Okay. All right, we're in this together. <laughs> Children of the light. And by the way, we're living in the day, and we may not recognize it or even want to admit it, but we're living in the day of the remnant, the remnant church. We most certainly are. Every church, uh, well, I don't know that for a fact, every church, but I think that we can visit around and find that most churches within it has a remnant. We're talking about those that are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, ready to go, and will not compromise their belief. There's a remnant. And that's the day that we're living in, and it's only going to get <clears throat> more so as the, the day of the Lord approaches. Now, he's telling us here at the very beginning in, in, this, in the lesson text that there's those who watch. There's watchers in the church. I consider myself one. I, I'm pretty much aware of the times and pretty much... Uh, investigate and see the devices of the devil in his schemes that's attacking the church. So there's those who watch, and just like in Thessalonians, they don't need to be told when the hour will come, for they're ready all the time for the coming of the Lord. And uh, very much aware, very much aware of the signs of the times uh, that were we're living in sort of like the sons of is it Issachar in the book of Judges that they were uh, a group of men from a family sons of Issachar men that uh, under, had the understanding of the times that's anointed people and there are anointed people today they they understand the times that we're living in and to be anointed you'll know that if, if you don't really know that you're not anointed at all you have to be aware of that because it's true, it's, it's what's upon us. And uh, these people in Thessalonians, Paul was not concerned about continually warning them about the hour that they were living in, about the coming of the Lord was without warning. It could happen at any moment. And uh, so he understood that they had sufficient instruction regarding the day of the Lord. And folks, you here, us together, we've had sufficient or adequate training in this area. We're aware. We get instruction from the word of God. And this morning we're getting more of it. Uh, that's the soon coming of the Lord uh, is at hand. Uh, God's spirit, his anointing, it, it helps us to be aware that Jesus is, we're living in the time when he could come at any moment. 
So we got instruction from the Word of God and the Holy Ghost. And what about the pastor? I've been here a couple of years. I understand that the pastor keeps us aware, keeps us on our toes. And that's the pastor's job. So you and I have no excuse. We've got the three instructors already. We've had the Word, God's Spirit, and the pastor. We're kind of like that Thessalonian church, aren't we? Nobody needs to tell us. We already know. We've been instructed. And what about the church family? I'm sure that from time to time, you all talk among yourselves. We're living in the last days. Jesus could come at any moment. And I know you have those conversations among yourselves. So the church family keeps us on our toes. And then, what about church literature? We just read from the word of God that where it was recorded in our church literature that Jesus is coming soon. We're living in the last days. We're without excuse to be caught off guard. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I say homeschool, but it's home church. Homeschool is good. I've never heard that re referred to like that, but that was good. A lot of them, they just hear the cross. They're mm -hmm. out on the cross. But mm -hmm. they don't go in the depth of how, what Jesus did for us to, uh, to, to love us and to be with us. And, and a lot of times, and I don't listen to, I don't listen. I'm, I'm looking here while you're talking, uh, and the uh, uh, you're right. And in Second Thessalonians chapter one, he he mentions that what you're talking about there. He mentions that, and he talks about the tribulation. He talks about the persecution that they're in, the tough times, and he mentions suffering. And I can't find that scripture there, but I read over it, and then I read it again this morning to you. I'm sure the word suffering is in there. If you help me find that particular verse in that text, uh, maybe it's in the beginning text, but uh, there's a above that lifeline on fifty seven at the top. It said uh, it said how he would bring them relief from their persecutors. Yeah. Well, yes, I, I, you know, the persecution going on and I, I, how unfair the devil is and how bully he is. 
they were young converts, but yet he would not hold back. He was here, suffering. Verse 5 was the particular verse that... Uh, Oh yeah, here it is. This verse 5 was the main verse I was, had in mind. <clears throat> Which is manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy. Now think about, as, as Sister Brenda was on this right here, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. Wow. The, see, that homeschooling you're talking about, they don't get that message. Worthy to suffer? <laughs> People in the world don't want to hear that, do they? What's that other scripture about consider it all? Is the word good? Lisa used to quote this, but it was just when you're in trials and tribulations, consider it all good. Because we're suffering also. But we're again, worthy. The exact scripture that I know what you're yeah. but But that, that thought there about we're suffering because God accounts us worthy to suffer for his sake, for his kingdom. Now, that, that's some pretty strong and stout lessons there. Yeah. You get a new Christian in and you tell them everything is love, 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 and they come across a tribulation and they're like, well, how did this happen? You know, why is this happening to me? I love God. They need to be prepared for the reality. The reality that there's an attack going on. You're attacked. People think love is hug your love. I love you. I love you. Yeah. Love you. Love you. Love you. But love, love is love. Yeah. But love is, and that is too. We look at Yeah, we do. Showed, Jesus showed love how he went through life and then getting humiliated. And then yeah, and he still loved it. Right. And we don't know. We can't understand the great love that the Lord has. No, no, we. But, we, but I no. think He can give us portions that we need in our heart to overcome the world. The Bible says we are drawn away from our own lusts. Yeah. We get away from the Lord. We get away from the. We, we can just uh, concentrate on, well, that's the message of the cross, but not get in real depths of what the cross is. And what love it took for that cross. Yeah. Sometimes we're drawn away for our own self. Sometimes we just don't think about it. You know? Yeah. And then some people don't even really realize it all. You well, know, that they're not there, they're not rooted in the church. They don't realize all the love that it took for God all right. and for Jesus to go through what it did. She's thinking about how unworthy I am that He died for me. But he loved me so much that he died anyway, even though I was unworthy. So, so there's a he suffered. He loved me so much that he suffered for my sin. And 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 but we're not willing to suffer. Uh, somebody says something mean to you. Uh, the hair begins to stand up on the back of your neck, and you're ready to go into attack mode. I'm gonna get even with you, buddy. You know. You know. We we got to watch that attitude. We're gonna suffer persecution. We're going to suffer attacks, but he wants us to love our neighbor. Uh, if I say one more thing, you know. Sure. Uh, I was in, it took me to a couple of nights. I couldn't sleep. I was sleeping and being thankful about a lot of, lot of things. Uh -huh. But uh, and when I read the list, and it said, this has been a, a today's lesson, um, the third Let no man deceive you by let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away. Yeah. yeah. And I got to think about that. How in the world can you fall away? You know, you're really in love, but you can. You can. You can. And I, I don't know. I read that and I just got to thinking about, you know, like a preacher, you can hear them and they just preach on one thing. Yeah. No. But what I have is this. It's the same line. We have a we have a 
a nation full of hirelings. Hirelings is what we have. I was riding down the road yesterday, and, just, and a thought hit me. In the Old Testament, we had prophets. And where did people find the prophets at? Where were they? In the Bible, when we talk about, there's one plowing when he was called to be a prophet, you know, and then there was one in his house. It might have been the same one in his house when Naaman came to get healed. And he was in his house. One was in the field. Uh, I think Elijah was by the river when he got caught away, wasn't he? There's just different places, these prophets. And when people went to look for a prophet, you know where they did not go? <laughs> no, they didn't go. They didn't go to church to find a prophet. Isn't that amazing? But now, when do we, we, we think about the preacher who who actually was took the place in the church of the church age? The preacher took the place of the actual prophet, and uh, in in his leadership role in to the nation and to the community. But anyhow, when we think of preacher now, we go to church. He's not out there ministering among the folks like the prophet did. Most of them aren't. You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> Why? Well, sticks and stones might break my bones, but today words hurt you, don't they? You don't want to go out there and get ridiculed and put in jail, and uh, it's rough out there. So, so they are in their gated community <laughs> and preach the word. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Throw it off on the preacher. Sometimes that's one of the reasons that's the only message they preach. They're basically doing the work of the evangelists. Yeah. Or if, or if we got somebody you know in the hospital, work associate or whatever, preacher, you need to go visit this so-and-so at the hospital. You know, oh, yeah, what used to the Christian would go and visit them in the hospital. So we're, we're, it's, the, uh, we, we've got to change, and it, it's, it's, not, it's not good. We're, not, uh, we're, we're letting bad things happen to us. We're letting the devil have at us, and, and we're really not doing a whole lot in self-defense. The first lesson heading here in our, in our lesson about children of light said, Be alert and self-controlled. Pretty good heading for, for the lesson right there. And uh, be alert. You know, so many of us are not alert. We're not aware that we're experiencing spiritual warfare among your family. Spiritual warfare is going on. Uh, among the marriage, spiritual warfare is going on. On your job, spiritual warfare. And and a lot of it is not going to be overcome just by smiling and doing good, you know. A lot of it can be overcome by uh, love your neighbor as yourself. But we're experiencing spiritual warfare for the souls of men and women. We are. The devil's not going to give it up. That's ground he has, and he don't want to give it up. So we're, we're, if we're going to win souls to Jesus Christ, and I have won so few souls that I, uh, I'm sure I have to I ask God to help me and forgive me. I haven't won many at all to the Lord, but I've won some. And, uh, but it's a spiritual warfare to do so. We need to be on the attack in, in, in that regard. It's a spiritual warfare for the soul of our nation, and we're giving that up because we don't want to get involved with the issues. We don't want to speak up. And we need to understand we're in a spiritual warfare for our own soul. We need to be alert to that. The devil don't respect us just because I'm saved. He could be meaner. And, and we're, we're in the spiritual warfare for the soul of this church or wherever you go to church. You're in the spiritual warfare for the soul of that church. It's not an easy road. And we need, to, he says here in the, in the last, be alert and self-controlled. 
Watch your behavior. Yes, ma'am. That's right, be the church. Good point. That's what we've got to do in this last day that we're living in. Now, uh, we're, we're forever under attack. Yes. That's right. I un understand that. Yes. And we should face every day like that. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and 6, Therefore let us not sleep, as do others. Now he's not talking about being dead. He's talking about being dead spiritually, but not physically dead. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Watch and be sober. Charles Spurgeon had a quote that I thought was good. He said, an unwatchful church will soon become an unholy church. We'll begin to blend with the, with the world. And James 2 and 26 says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. What kind of works? Well, one of the works in the commentary, in the next heading the commentary has, is to build up one another. Do we do that or we go around talking about what we don't like about them or talk about the mistakes they've made or the wrongs they've done? Do we go around talking people down or do we go about building up one another when we come together? Oh, an unwatchful church will soon become an unholy church. So we need to court in the lesson the next point was to build up one another. We need to pray for one another. There, we're all in a warfare. And we're not all uh, expert soldiers. Some of us suffer heartache and hardship that because we're weak in the faith. So we need to, when we come to church, we need those folks that are aware and alert that we're in warfare. And we need to pray for them. We need to be a witness to them. And uh, and, and when we go out there in the workplace, we need to uphold faith. Now, I walked up on a conversation at school last two weeks ago, and it concerned the Super Bowl. Two teachers were talking about the halftime show, and one of them I happened to walk up. One of them said, "I I wouldn't let my child watch that. You know, I I took them out of the room and wouldn't let them see that." And uh, I agreed with him. I said that was an extremely immoral halftime that we've that we've been to, we've heard about. Uh, who was the guy that was over the family ministry? He's retired now. Dobson. Boy, he he had an article that really put that thing down. What kind of nation have we become to allow uh, that to be on our television screen? And how? Bad the NFL was to put that into our living room without warning. Well, he, he had a strong article in rebuttal to what the NFL did in their halftime. And, um, but he's standing up. Do we stand up? In the public, do we stand up? Well, what a game. But the NFL sent us a corrupt message. Yeah, they did. They showed us some ugly stuff, and we don't need to watch that kind of stuff. We need to uh, rebuke that kind of stuff, you know. So, so stand up for the morality that you, that the Bible teaches us. Be a, be a be a warrior. Build up one another, and, and let them know they should not uh, follow stuff like that. That it is extremely immoral, and we shouldn't uh, 
uh, commend the NFL, but we should, if, if we're going to do anything, write them a letter or tell them, give them a card or a phone call or talk to your buddies that are football fans and let them know this is ugly stuff and we shouldn't put up with this being put into our living rooms without warning. Uh, so there's a, a, a warfare going on, and we need to build up one another. The, what about a warfare for our nation? We need to pray, and I do pray for this nation of ours. I, I'm not going to give up on it. I'm going to ask God. It's God's will to save everybody. It is, and I'm going to pray God's will be done, that people get saved and turn to the Lord and help turn our nation around. Now, I, and pray for the church. I put a little note down here in print, season. We need to pray for our nation and our leaders, and mostly for our Democrats. <laughs> if you're a Democrat, I don't apologize for that, because I just read another article today that in Colorado, the Democrats there that are in the state program, the state politics there, are, are, are on board for this. Immediately after birth, you can slay the, the, the child. They're doing that, what, New York, Virginia? They're, they're trying to get that legislation passed, and then once it gets started, it'll be national. That a baby can be born, and it can be aborted after birth. Now, that's, that's murder. Amen. But we're, 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 we're in a nation that's so immoral and blind that they cannot see the wrong in that. We need to pray for our nation and our leaders, which that's very scriptural. And I'm going to read this next in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved, praise God, and to come to the knowledge of God of the truth. So, <clears throat> excuse me, be the children of the light. And uh, by prayer and our action, be the light. Remember the words we learned the other Sunday? By our orthodoxy and our orthopraxy, be the children of the light. Don't just talk it, but live it. You're going to have to swallow hard sometimes. You're going to have to take it on the chin and turn the other cheek sometimes. But be the light and show that you love your neighbor as the word of God commands us to. Build up the church. Build up people in the church. And, and uh, mm. <coughs> encourage one another. That, that's, that would be pleasing unto the Lord. Uh, there's children of darkness out there too. We're the children of the light, but there, there are children of the darkness. And, and they are, if you're going to be a watchman, you're going to see that they're busy deconstructing the church. They are. And they're busy deconstructing our nation. They're not building it up. They're deconstructing it and they're making it something that God never intended for it to be. Uh, like the church of Laodicea, they were clueless to their position as a church. The Lord told them in the book of Revelation, you remember what he said about the uh, Laodicean church, and uh, they were clueless, but we, we cannot be clueless. We got to understand that there are forces out there, devil-inspired to deconstruct this church and all the churches across America as they deconstruct our nation. One of the things that they do is they get control. Yeah, they get control of the church and the preacher and the politician. They got a stranglehold on them. How do they do that? Well, they're already getting in such control now. Have you heard of, have you ever heard of political correctness? <laughs> it's a scheme to get control, and they're doing a mighty good job at deconstructing our churches and our country by political correctness. It's a, it's a, it's a tool that they use to control us. Got to understand that. 
We've got to know that. That's what we're up against. That's one of the battles that we fight. I refuse to be bound by political correctness. I may lose my job. Uh, and that hurt. I like to be able to go on a vacation every once in a while. I like to buy a new suit every once in a while. And I lose my job and all that's gone. Boo! Yeah. See? They got you. You're going to lose your job if you say certain things. Ask you certain questions on an interview for a job. If you don't say the right things, you're not going to get that job. So they put control through political correctness. It's just a scheme to get control of the churches and get control of the nation. Now, another thing that, that keeps popping up is this term postmodernism. It's a philosophy. And, and it, it, it's, another, it's another means of putting them in control. And this thing called postmodern thinking has got control of our universities. Don't think it's not. It's there. It's, it's got a stranglehold on the administration. It's got a stranglehold on the professors. Only a few speak out. And if they don't have tenure, they're gone. They'll find a reason to get rid of them. So, so we, we got these things going on that, that, that puts them in control. And one of the things that postmodern thinkers are saying is that we need, to, we need a change. And this thing called transcending truth that the Bible teaches, no such thing. It's just baggage that we carry along from our far past, and we need to get rid of it. Because it's not a letting us become what we need. It's not allowing us to reach the goals that, that we need to reach. See, so all these things are, are designed to control us and they teach diversity. Bunch of hypocrites. They teach diversity. Another thing, it's another tactic to deconstruct the church and deconstruct the nation. The Bible teaches unity. But the devil teaches diversity. It's a tool. It's a weapon, actually, being used against us. Now, anybody, when you talk about diversity and then you throw in this tolerance, you know, that they got to throw in that we got to tolerate all these different opinions and things. But the one thing they do not ever tolerate is a person who sees the world through the lens of Scripture. They don't have a place at the table for you. That's why they're just hypocrites. Hypocrites of inclusion, those that teach diversity. It's a means to deconstruct our nation and our churches. James 3 and 10 tells us about them. Out of the mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be. The people who are in charge, wanting to get complete control over us, they talked about the blessings. Bless this group, and bless this group, and bless this group, and then they curse us, and call us bigots. Call us haters. <laughs> and this ought not be, the Bible says. If they're going to bless these other groups, they ought to bless the group that looks through scriptures that believes in the scriptures now this may sound a little bit too political to some but I'm going to say this I wrote down here in, in, as a note this group they bless the minorities they bless them as victim groups they bless the LBGT, they bless the blacks they bless the women, they bless the Muslims but the Bible believer they curse him what kind of deal is this? It's a tactic to get control of our nation and our churches. Now, we're children of the light. We cannot merge into these false doctrines and false beliefs. We'll do as Sister Brenda says. We'll lose our love for the Lord. We'll fall out. What was that scripture you used to see? Falling away. 
we will begin to fall away if we begin to merge and condone and compromise with this crap that's trying to get control of our nation and control of our church, control of you. There's only certain things they're going to want you to think. Only certain things, certain ways they want you to speak. Say, preacher, you've lost your mind. No. I'm just watching and seeing and looking and noticing all this stuff while most everybody that I see are just going right along like, oh, well, it's just another phase we're going through. It's not another phase. They're, they're out for the juggler. And we need to be aware of that. And we need to be involved and pray about it and speak up about it. In 2 Corinthians uh, 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? So he tells us not to associate with them and be a part of them. We can love them, but we don't talk the lingo. And we want them to know we don't believe in their, their way they believe. Lifelines, and we'll, we'll move on to, to uh, get away from the children of light, try to get into this other uh, heading before we get done. Lifelines on page 53 in the paperback commentary. All the rules in Scripture for Christian living, for encouraging and helping our fellow Christians, and for doing good to all people come under the heading of love your neighbor. As you love yourself and it throws in or do to others as you would have them do to you and the word of God in the text in verse 13 part of that verse says this it's very powerful to me as I studied the lesson and be at peace among yourselves be at peace among yourselves that's something you work at that's talking about work. Faith without works is dead. That's a work right there. Keep the peace among the brethren. Keep and be at peace among yourselves. We need to work at this and recognize we need to encourage our spiritual leaders. We need to keep our pastor encouraged. He's fighting the devil. We need to keep our members encouraged. They're fighting the devil. We need to Every time we're together, we need to exercise dignity and respect when we communicate with one another. Uh, that that's the only makes sense, doesn't it? Because otherwise, we're just like the world, just like the world. Children of the light. I wrote this down. Children of the light are to practice love your neighbor. We practice that. It's not necessarily a natural thing. <laughs> we need to practice that the word of God instructs us to do that and we need to practice following the rules in scripture they tell us how to behave orthopraxy they tell us how to behave and don't be silent oh my I'll never get done with the, all this but by talking about never getting done, I'm just going to eat up time that I would have had to share a thought here. Don't be silent. We're, we're in a warfare. Don't, don't be silent. We need to overcome Satan's schemes, and we're not going to overcome them by being shut mouth. <laughs> That's right, eh, Pastor? <laughs> we're not man spirited with it, but we got to tell it. We've got to share the scriptures. We've got to share the truth. They're certainly sharing their thoughts with us. We need to share back. You can't beat the truth. It's just not being spoke like it ought to be. We don't do battle with the enemy, with truth, like we should. We become silent and say, oh, well, God's in control. Here he is. But he's called us to be witnesses. <laughs> he's in control, but he asks for our work as Christians, as children of the light. Now, uh, there, in our world, there's just so much God rejection. If you reject the Bible, you've rejected God. You can't separate the two. 
But the world, not just the United States, the world is rejecting God. I know you've read about uh, Franklin Graham, who had a crusade set up to tour England. And all the big venues that he had rented, I don't know where it's two or three or however, they shut him down. You've read that. You can't come and preach here. But some of the local churches around England have invited him to come on anyway. So he's going to preach, but he'll not reach the crowds that he would have if he would have uh, had those venues available to him. Now, who's going to suffer the consequences of that? The leadership, the children of darkness that won't let the gospel be preached. In fact, in Graham, to me, he's a greater preacher than his daddy because he tells the truth. And he don't just preach that. You're talking about just preach a certain message. He don't. Franklin Graham pretty much covers the whole spectrum. So they needed him in England, but they have practically shut him down. Now, this is a God-rejecting nation. These things are happening to us. Now, <clears throat> uh, the Pope, a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was, he, he had a speech there in Argentina, or to the people of Argentina. And those fundamentalists, there are some good, holiness people in Argentina, in South America, by the way. And he told those Argentinians, I guess is the way you refer to them, that were fundamentalist Christians, that y'all are the scourge of the earth. The Pope said that. About fundamentalist Christians. Yeah. Yeah, documented. Look at, Google it. And, and, and by extension, he's telling you that you are the scourge of the earth. Because you believe in fundamental truths of the Bible. Yeah, that's, that's coming from leadership. <laughs> that's right. He's the extension of God. That's what they believe. And he is uh, also, he's, uh, I don't remember the name he called us because we don't believe in global, global warming. He's a global warmest. And uh, he's on that bandwagon. Anything communistic, that pope is for it. He's a communist. I think he's a communist before he is a Catholic. And that's very dangerous for us. Um, there's just a rise of wickedness. Another article I come across, they have made the largest Ouija board that's ever been made in Massachusetts. It's in Salem, Massachusetts, and they built it on the site of the infamous witch trials. Isn't that something? Isn't that somehow the devil just brings things together for his causes? And that Ouija board is 3,168 square feet. <laughs> They're going to conjure up the devils with that thing. Right there where the old witch trials took place a long time ago in Salem, Massachusetts. So many things are happening around us. It, the, the Lord's coming. And the devil is fastly trying to get a hold and get control over all of us that he possibly can. So in a time here of, the, of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. You can, you can not just be ridiculed and persecuted. You can be put in jail or worse. <laughs> overcoming Satan's schemes. We've got to remember. Let me tell you one thing quickly, and I don't think I'm going to get done, but this thing, he's a scheming devil. And we're seeing it happen, and so many, the bulk of our nation don't even think about it, that it's a scheme. When I was a young guy, just getting out of the army, <clears throat> uh, well, let's go beyond that. Ten more years. The AIDS epidemic hit. Actually, it was in the 60s when it came to this country, AIDS. And, uh, but they would, didn't really know what was happening. Then it started infecting a lot of people. And, and in 1981, it was declared an epidemic, if you remember. Considered an e e epidemic. As they studied this, they, they, of course, it wasn't much studying to understand. It was the homosexual crowd where this hit the hardest. 
maybe 95% of the people that had it in 1981 was a homosexual. So, so I thought to myself, I was pastoring, I was pastoring, I started pastoring in 1980, and in 1981 I was pastoring, and I was preaching holiness, and, and I thought to myself, those homosexual activists have bit the dust. This will get them. This will help them see the evil of that lifestyle. God's judged them. And, and man, I don't know what they will come up with next, but this was over. I said that in 1981 when the AIDS epidemic was declared. By the way, it wasn't always called AIDS. Do you remember what it was called in 1981? G-R-I-D, GRID. That's what it was called in 1981. And, and the, uh, what, did, what does GRID mean? Gay-related immunodeficiency disease. GRID, gay-related. And the uh, homosexual activists went after the CDC and the medical field and, and got them to tame it on down. Can't call it that. So they come up with this other word. They call it AIDS now because it, <coughs> it, uh, it made homosexuality seem evil. So they had to calm it down. They called it AIDS. They changed the words. Change the words. And today, we don't think about it. We don't even think about AIDS. Hardly ever do you think about it. Somebody gets the flu, it's all over the news. Did you know that 40,000 Americans approximately, could be 38, could be 42, but approximately 40,000 Americans contract AIDS every year? But it is shuffled back. It's never on what's been called the fake news. <laughs> it's never on there. When's the last time you heard that remark? Google that and study that. It's happening. 40,000 a year contract AIDS. Oh, it's, it's worldwide, brother. Worldwide news. And 10,000... Approximately, could be nine, could be ten or eleven, but approximately ten thousand people die from AIDS in America every year. Uh, it's all right, because what we got to do is push gay rights. What we got to do is convince everybody that homosexuality is normal, even though the statistics tell us a ugly story. It's amazing how that, that, that we're blinded. It's amazing how that we're, that we're covered over with lies and deceptions and we don't get bothered about it. We need to go to prayer about it. We need to speak up. He's one too. He's one. And he's the number, he's, we have a gay, we have a gay guy running for president, and he's the number two man in the party. <laughs> I just laugh to keep him crying, folks. It is sad. Who would have thought America would become what it's becoming? And the, and, and this is, I'll close on this note, it's one minute after ten, but it's your fault. It's your fault that we went over time because y'all are so attentive and so helpful in this lesson. I'm going to blame it on y'all. Pastor, it's their fault. I got, it. got it. We have another 59 minutes. Oh, well. Well. <laughs> now, <laughs> let me say this. To, how, to, 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 to talk about the devil, to talk about Satan's schemes, and I'll, I'll close in, on this. Uh, and I don't hate these people. Just just to show you how it's smoothed over as a scheme of the devil. I, th that's why I brought this up. And I'm going to bring this up. Has anybody ever heard of Albert Moeller? Albert Moeller. He uh, says lately, 
He's the president, if you don't know who Albert Moeller is, he is the president of the Southern Baptist Seminary in Kentucky. And he's one of the leaders in the Southern Baptist Church and in the Southern Baptist Convention. He has said that evangelicals have lied to the public all of these years about the homosexual. Homosexuality should be acceptable in the church. Albert Moore, Google it. He says, we're living in modern times now, and psychology has caused us to have to change our thinking about this. That's exactly right. We're there, see. A man with the credentials of Albert Moore, a man in the position that he's in, would actually say, they should be accepted in the congregations of the church, and the church should not treat them any different than anybody else. They should be allowed here, and they should. But if somebody was committing adultery, and they come into your church, are you going to tell them that, uh, that what they're doing is, is okay. <laughs> Man, you're all right, buddy. <laughs> you just keep on committing adultery, and, and God loves you, and he'll take you to heaven. No, preachers wouldn't do that, and you wouldn't tell him either. Or a drunk. He come in smelling like liquor. Just everybody knows he's, he's lost his family, he's lost his job, he's just a drunk. But you go to him and say, you just keep on drinking, buddy. Keep on drinking. God loves you. He does love him. And you go to heaven when you die. It's, it's all the same when they, when they say, when they come in and condone your sin, it's, it's, that's what they're asking you to do with the homosexual. Even though they're doing evil, they're doing an abomination according to the Bible, then the preacher tells them they're okie dokie. Albert Moore. I was surprised when I heard that too. Not only did I hear it, I, I heard the man say it myself. America used to be considered the greatest of the great in the nation. And now they say you can sit where you want. Yeah, the Democrats. The Democrats do not like Israel. Yeah, that's bib Oh yeah, the Bible's coming. And I'm sorry we went over time, but I thought this was a very interesting thing. Talking about the devil's schemes and how he's just smoothing things over and most people are just going right on, not noticing. Be a watcher and help people get saved. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this congregation this morning and their Efforts toward Bible study. We thank you for the participation, Lord, that they love you, we know, and they love your word. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you be with us through the remainder of our worship. Bless the preaching of your word, bless the singing and the music, that it all gives you glory and honor. It's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.